May 24, The Dedication of the Temple When Solomon finished making these prayers and petitions to the Lord, he stood up in front of the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands raised toward heaven. He stood and in a loud voice blessed the entire congregation of Israel. Praise the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel, just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the wonderful promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us or abandon us. May he give us the desire to do his will in everything and to obey all the commands, decrees, and regulations that he gave our ancestors. And may these words that I have prayed in the presence of the Lord be before him constantly, day and night, so that the Lord our God may give justice to me and to his people Israel according to each day's needs. Then people all over the earth will know that the Lord alone is God and there is no other. And may you be completely faithful to the Lord our God. May you always obey his decrees and commands just as you are doing today. Then the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifices to the Lord. Solomon offered to the Lord a peace offering of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people of Israel dedicated the temple of the Lord. That same day, the king consecrated the central area of the courtyard in front of the Lord's temple. He offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of peace offerings there, because the bronze altar in the Lord's presence was too small to hold all the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. Then Solomon and all Israel celebrated the festival of shelters in the presence of the Lord our God. A large congregation had gathered from as far away as Labo Hamath in the north and the brook of Egypt in the south. The celebration went on for fourteen days in all, seven days for the dedication of the altar and seven days for the festival of shelters. After the festival was over, Solomon sent the people home. They blessed the king and went to their homes joyful and glad because the Lord had been good to his servant David and to his people Israel. From Second Chronicles, when Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the burnt offerings and sacrifices, and the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glorious presence of the Lord filled it. When all the people of Israel saw the fire coming down and the glorious presence of the Lord filling the temple, they fell face down on the ground and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, He is good, His faithful love endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices to the Lord. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. And so the king and all the people dedicated the temple of God. The priests took their assigned positions, and so did the Levites, who were singing, His faithful love endures forever. They accompanied the singing with music from the instruments King David had made for praising the Lord. Across from the Levites, the priests blew the trumpets while all Israel stood. Solomon then consecrated the central area of the courtyard in front of the Lord's temple. He offered burnt offerings and the fat of peace offerings there, because the bronze altar he had built could not hold all the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrificial fat. For the next seven days, Solomon and all Israel celebrated the Festival of Shelters. A large congregation had gathered from as far away as Lebo Hamath in the north and the Brook of Egypt in the south. On the eighth day, they had a closing ceremony, for they had celebrated the dedication of the altar for seven days and the Festival of Shelters for seven days. Then, at the end of the celebration, Solomon sent the people home. They were all joyful and glad because the Lord had been so good to David and to Solomon and to his people Israel. From 1 Kings, the Lord's response to Solomon. So Solomon finished building the temple of the Lord, as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he had planned to do. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time, as he had done before at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your petition. I have set this temple apart to be holy, this place you have built where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. 
As for you, if you will follow me with integrity and godliness as David your father did, obeying all my commands, decrees, and regulations, then I will establish the throne of your dynasty over Israel forever. For I made this promise to your father David, one of your descendants will always sit on the throne of Israel. But if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the commands and decrees I have given you, and if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot Israel from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I have made holy to honor my name. I will make Israel an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled and will shake their heads in amazement. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their ancestors out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead and bowed down to them. That is why the Lord has brought all these disasters on them. From 2 Chronicles So Solomon finished the temple of the Lord, as well as the royal palace. He completed everything he had planned to do in the construction of the temple and the palace. Then one night the Lord appeared to Solomon and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place for making sacrifices. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and set it apart to be holy, a place where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. As for you, if you faithfully follow me as David your father did, obeying all my commands, decrees, and regulations, then I will establish the throne of your dynasty. For I made this covenant with your father David when I said, One of your descendants will always rule over Israel. But if you or your descendants abandon me and disobey the decrees and commands I have given you, and if you serve and worship other gods, then I will uproot the people from this land that I have given them. I will reject this temple that I have made holy to honor my name. I will make it an object of mockery and ridicule among the nations. And though this temple is impressive now, all who pass by will be appalled. They will ask, why did the Lord do such terrible things to this land and to this temple? And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead, and bowed down to them. That is why he has brought all these disasters on them. From 1 Kings Solomon's Agreement With Hiram. It took Solomon twenty years to build the Lord's temple and his own royal palace. At the end of that time, he gave twenty towns in the land of Galilee to King Hiram of Tyre. Hiram had previously provided all the cedar and cypress timber and gold that Solomon had requested. But when Hiram came from Tyre to see the towns Solomon had given him, he was not at all pleased with them. What kind of towns are these, my brother? he asked. So Hiram called that area Kabul, which means worthless, as it is still known today. Nevertheless, Hiram paid Solomon 9,000 pounds of gold. 